So good morning. Um, we've got um, Derek Tate, um, author of Learn, Enjoy, Flow and Grow here. And we've also got Leanne, um, who has been the narrator of the recently published audio version of the book. Um, Derek, could I start with you? Um, why was it important for you to publish an audio version of your book? Um, well, actually, initially, I didn't think about publishing an audio version. I was so focused on getting the paperback and ebook version out. Um, so the audio version was kind of uh, something that came along later. But now having done it and having had Leanne um, come to me and, and suggest it, it's, it's actually, I can see so much value in it um, because it really helps all the different types of learners that are out there you know, some of the reviews that I've had back since the, the audio version's gone out have, have really shown that um, people value that type of version as well. Even, even people who've read the, the ebook or the paperback version, you know, find that the audio version brings something else to, you know, things that they hadn't uh, noticed before when they read it. Um, so, yeah, it, it really helps cater for more types of learners, I suppose, would be the, one of the big reasons. Yes, it certainly seems to be a, a growing market um, with more people listening to, to podcasts and, and books when they're writing about um, traveling, running, etc., cetera, um, which is fantastic. Great. Um, Leanne, you picked up on the, the paperback copy of Derek's book um, when it was published um, and contacted uh, Derek. What, what interested you about this book? You know, how did it you know, come to the idea that you wanted to, to get involved and narrate for Derek? Um, two things really. One is um, an interest in subject matter myself. Um, I, my background is, is biological sciences and um, particularly um, uh, behavioural sciences. A positive psychology is, a, is something that I've been very interested in reading a lot around the subject for quite, quite a while just on a personal level. So the subject matter interested me and I, I really liked the connection with sport as well because <clears throat> uh, it, it, it might seem, it'll seem obvious to Derek, but didn't to me at the time was that the psychology of sport is, is just impacts people um, and their performance so significantly. And I, I really hadn't collated the benefits of positive psychology in, in, in that way. So, so that interested me. So that's partly why I picked up the book. And then the, the way that Derek had set out the book, I thought it flowed really nicely, <laughs> excuse the pun, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, and I, I, from a, you know, from my own point of view, I thought that would work really well as an audiobook because I did feel that it's the kind of thing that you could almost have the two sitting alongside one another, you know, you can either um, if you listen to it and, and we're reading it, which an awful lot of people do actually, um, you could use that and use the diagrams and try and, and work through it. So it, as Derek said, depending on the kind of learner that you are, it would work work in both ways. So I, I just felt it would work really well as an audiobook. Um, just going back to what you're saying, I mean, the, the, the audiobook market is growing substantially. I mean, in the US, in 2020, it had its ninth straight double digit growth year. Um, it's now a kind of $3.5 billion industry and it really is, people are, are there are dedicated um, audiobook listeners, people who don't read but will listen to audiobooks, um, but also there are more and more people coming to it as, a, as an alternative to an ebook. and um, 2020 is now heading towards um, the point where more people are downloading and listening to audiobooks and they are to ebooks. So it's it's it is a significantly growing market. Slightly slower in the UK, um, but the UK saw a 15% rise last year as well. And obviously the pandemic has meant people have had a lot more time on their hands and audiobooks has just you know developed from there. There was 71,000 audiobooks published in 2020. So it's you know it's a really significant market and more and more people are, are listening to it. Um, and I think that uh, you do get something different from listening to, to an audiobook than you would just just reading it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it was for those reasons why I chose it really. <laughs> Excellent, lovely. And Derek, you, you've been using it with some, some athletes um, more recently. Um, and how do you think the audiobook is going to be able to benefit them? Um, I, I think for a lot of people, it's a time factor as well. I've, I've had some people say, you know, that they've been reading the book, but having the audio version as well is just helpful because they can just build it into their 
into their day a little bit more easily. You know, so many people will, will have their phones with them and just listen to things as they're doing other activities. So, you know, I had one person commented that they were going to, they just got the audio book and were taking it on their cycling trip. So, um, you know, so it, yeah, it's, it's just more user friendly, I guess, for a lot of people. Yeah, and it's something that people can just go back to certain sections perhaps as well, you know, because it's very easy to navigate through um, with having the chapter titles, etc. Once people know the book and the structure of it, then uh, they can just tap on it and, and there it is exactly what they want to listen to again. Excellent. Um, Leanne, just coming back to yourself again, the process that you go through to create an audiobook, I mean, it, it must take quite a bit of time, um, development, redoing certain things, I'm sure. Can you just run us through a little bit of the process that you go through? Very Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, it is a very lengthy process. Um, to give you an idea, for every one hour of finished audio, it's five to six hours of work. So, um, yes, it is a lengthy process. Um, the, the, there's various stages to it, obviously. The first, the first thing being read the book. <laughs> There's absolutely no point in going in and narrating a book if you haven't read it. So that, um, so yes, that you, there's a fair amount of work in the preparation of the book. You have to um, obviously read it and then pick out particular elements. Uh, as in the case with Derek's, there were certain pronunciations to have a look at. Yeah. Think about, um, you know, again, in, in Derek's book, he has diagrams and he has additional material. How, how are we going to deal with that? How are we going to deal with footnotes? All those kind of things. You have to think about all of that in advance. Um, which is why it's good to have a good relationship with the author as well so that you can because for them they've written it they understand how they want it to sound in their own head um, and how that how I can portray that for them because at the end of the day for me as long as the author's happy I'm happy with 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 the end result so the preparation work is a big part of it to start with before you even get behind the microphone um, again as you as you mentioned earlier because the way that the book is set up you, should, you tend to to work chapter at a time um but for for me i i will do most of my recording in the morning um and tend to do about three hours at a time and i use a system um a technical system called punch and roll which means that if i if I stumble as I go across, I can just go back and, and record over it again. So I don't have to, to re-edit because it's amazing how much your voice changes during the day, how much your voice changes from one day to the next. So to be able to have a consistent um, pace and tone, it, it is good to be able to, to kind of do some of that. Um, once you have narrated all of the book, you then obviously go back in and the next stage would be to proof it. And um, always best to have somebody else proof it for you because you can, it's amazing how much you can miss yourself. Mm -hmm. So um, if there's any issues from that, that comes back and those changes have to be made. And then in addition, any kind of, you know, funny wee noises, tummy rumbles, you know, that kind of thing that you have to take out, um, you know, and, uh, you, you then kind of go through a mastering process, which means kind of improving the quality of sound. And there are particular technical requirements you have to meet for Audible um, to enable them to be satisfied that the, the production quality is high enough for their listeners. So you have to ensure all of that. And then it is a final after that, you then listen to the whole book again and just make sure that you're happy with it before you pass it on to the to the author so yes it is a lengthy process but each stage is interesting each stage has its its um, enjoyable elements to it sometimes frustrating but enjoyable yeah <laughs> you say that you do this in in your house so you, you yeah probably... i have a purpose-built home studio um which um it's a kind of whisper room and that and ena it enables the um <clears throat> to have really no sound coming through at all other than what you hear is that uh, of the voice yeah Excellent. Oh, great. Well done. Thank you. Um, Derek, what were your initial thoughts um, as you listened to the recording for the very first time of your book in, in audio? Um, yeah, I remember when Leanne sent me the sample, I actually didn't realise it was my book. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was listening to it and I, you know, obviously thought Leanne's voice was, was really good and it, uh, interesting to listen to, but um, it, was, it took me a while to realise that the, the sample that she'd sent me was actually my book. 
which was which was quite funny and I thought it was quite interesting actually <laughs> so. but did you get drawn into the the sort of voice and sort of take you to a different place then it did really yeah and then obviously I proof uh, listened to it as well so it, it it did sort of bring the book alive really um because having written it obviously I, I was quite familiar with it but um just listening to somebody else narrating it was 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 really good excellent good so, so Derek, your your class is a an indie author, um, which is a, an independent author. Um, what challenges have you found along the way, and would you recommend this to any other budding indie authors? Um, I, I would say yes, um, although I think it's realizing that there's an awful lot of work involved um, as an independent author. You, you know, the writing of the book is is really just the first step. Um, there's so much to do after that and you don't really realize that um, there's so many different jobs that either you've got to do yourself or you've got to bring in other people and obviously bringing Leanne in to, to do the audio version is fantastic but um, you know there's so many different people you could bring in but then that would add to the costs um, so yeah it, it's, it's quite difficult there's the whole marketing side advertising side um, designing book covers you know, a, a whole host of things. So yeah, the writing is just just the first bit of it. Um, uh, you know, I've been a member of the Alliance of Independence Authors, and that's been very helpful in terms of getting advice. Um, and and there's lots of great advice out there, even on the Amazon um, Kindle Direct Publishing website. There's lots of stuff there, but it just takes time to go through and, and learn. Um, and I guess as I do more books, it'll be a little bit easier because I've I now kind of know the process. Um, but yeah, when you when you realise there's different formats of ebooks depending on where you're publishing, and then there's the paperback, and if you go wide as we call it and go to lots of different retailers, then there's you, you've got to go um, with, with different um, different companies such as Ingram Spark as well as Amazon, and yeah, so it's it's quite complex. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would certainly say if people feel they have a book inside them, then uh, technology and, and the modern modern processes allow you to do that much more easily than, than we did, you know, back in the day when I wrote my first book back in 2007, we, we had to get it all printed and delivered on two pallet loads in, in the back of a truck, you know, so it was, <laughs> uh, it's quite different to now, um, where it's, you know, just print on demand and available worldwide. Um, so yeah, it's, it's certainly easier in that sense. Excellent. Well, that's great. Thank you very much. It's been very interesting um, and hopefully it will inspire maybe a few a few new indie authors out there as well. Um, and obviously for people who've already got the paperback book, then uh, to get hold of the, the audio book and see, see if they can uh, get engrossed in that as well. So that's great. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Thank you.